so the optimization approach in design is based on three aspects that is redesign reevaluate and recompute so after you do your initial design run the first thing that you should do is redesign that is check your input parameters check if you are missing any inputs that are to be given at the manholes or the conduits or the other elements then reevaluate your criteria check if the criteria that you have provided is correct or see if it can be relaxed a little bit and then recompute again for your design and see if the design values are satisfying the constraints provided now coming to the design priorities so these are the design priorities followed by the jvf convex and the jvf rational solvers when they are designing the system so the first design priority is the pipe should fit within structures the second one is the pipe should not have a crown above the structure so here the structures are the upstream and the downstream manholes or inlets the pipe capacity should be greater than the discharge so this is true for all gravity conduits in which the pipe size is chosen in such a way that its carrying capacity is higher than the discharge it carries the downstream pipes should be at least as large as upstream pipes this is also true because in most storm and sewer networks the downstream pipe sizes are greater because of the higher flow they carry the pipe matching criteria downstream should be met the minimum cover constraint should be met the pipe matching criteria upstream should be met the maximum cover constraint should be met and other constraints and consideration so the other constraints and considerations are velocity and slope which are considered in the design priorities so this is the priorities these are the priorities which the gvf convex and the gvf rational solvers consider for designing the storm or sewer networks so an important note about constraint based design is that the design tool can help give you a starting point for your design based on the design criteria that you specify but the final design should be based on your engineering judgment and experience so the importance of this is that not all design criteria will be fulfilled and in all conditions so there are there might be some criteria like velocity or slope that might get fulfilled but inevitably some in some cases the cover criteria might not get fulfilled and this is just an example based on what we see what we saw in the earlier example that we did but uh, it is quite possible that the optimized design may not fulfill all the design criteria and manual adjustments are depending upon your engineering judgment and experience and why this is happening is that because of the wide range of choices and priorities that are made available to the user so you have a wide range of choices based on if you have a tabular input for a certain criteria if you have a simple range with only two values of minimum and maximum and if you are doing design for only inwards if you are doing design for the inwards as well as the pipe sizes so with the degrees of freedom that are given and with the multiple choices available it is hard to find an optimized solution which is satisfying all the constraints under all conditions so it is not always possible to meet every desired condition so it is very much the responsibility of the engineer to make final judgments and decisions regarding the best design for the client okay so now what we are going to do is we'll take a look at how these values are matching up with our constraints so the model over here is now designed so let us take a look at the results 
first I'll first just switch off the terrain to make things a little bit easy and change it to CAD style. So here I have prepared a few color coding annotations for velocity, slope and cover. Those are the three criteria that we are using. So let us check for velocity first. So the the way I have set up this color coding is that I have kept all the values within the range of 0 0.6 to 3 as green and whatever that is beyond this range I have kept it as red so that it will be easily identified. So we can see there are two pipes over here which are not within the prescribed range. So I have another uh, annotation over here which gives the, me the velocity, cover and slope yeah, and uh, yeah diameter is also there in that. So if you take a look over here the velocity is zero over here but uh, okay so this would mean that either uh, there is no flow upstream or uh, but yeah the slope is not flat so Yes, okay, so the upstream manhole, which is MH195, does not have any sanitary loading. So that is why the velocity is zero. So we know the reason why this criteria is not being met over here. Now let us take a look at the other pipe. So here the velocity is 0 0.25, uh, but I think we can do, we can increase the invert elevation over here slightly to get a better slope value which would in turn increase the velocity so this is something which we can try okay or even on the downstream side unless these values are not disturbed okay but these are also minimum so yeah we will have to think of some way to do this okay so this is how the velocity is represented now let us take a look at the slope so slope criteria is uh, more or less the same so that is not a problem over here and uh, for cover okay yeah so for cover uh, we can see that there is uh, this one stretch uh, where the cover is constraint is violated so we can see the cover values uh, yeah okay so it is 11.3 meters 10.52 11.86 so on and so forth which are higher 12.13 which are higher than our maximum value of 10 meters so we can see that all the way extending till here the cover uh, maximum cover value constraint has been violated now we'll see how to resolve this uh, issue of constraint being violated so for this uh, let us take a look at the profile and see how the uh, slopes are being designed so I have already created the profile over here so I'll just highlight it for you to know. So you can see this is the highlighted profile that is profile 4. So let us take a look at it. Okay. So okay, so we can see over here that more or less the gradient on the down downstream side of this manhole is more or less smooth. So if you take a look at the slopes on this side so the slopes are pretty much uh, mild okay and uh, velocities are also about the minimum value so that is not a problem over here but if you take a look at the upstream side the slopes are pretty much steeper but the velocity is also just the minimum so my guess is that uh, 
the software is optimizing uh, the slopes in such a way as to satisfy the minimum velocity criteria in this uh, in these stretches okay this couple uh, this few four to five pipes that is why the uh, pipe over here is getting deeper okay and you can also see that uh, this manhole is uh, collecting flow from these three conduits so it is it might be possible that there are a lot of inward elevations which are at a different level joining over here depending on what kind of flow is being carried in these branches so one way to uh, repair this manually is to go to the calculation option and switch the calculation type back to analysis okay so that you don't mess up the design part or you can simply create a different scenario in which uh, all this data is incorporated and you can choose the analysis option so just to try something out over here let me just try and reduce the uh, cover constraint over here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select a few manholes over here and i'll try to reduce the inward elevation of these manholes okay so i've selected some manholes right click edit group and i'm going to choose the manhole table so in here we can see that uh, these are the values so i'm just going to global edit and let us say i'll add up to three meters okay okay so i'll just close this for instance okay up to three meters and uh, we'll close it off now i'll choose all the conduits over here okay maybe not this but till here okay edit group conduit and we'll set it to set in what to start and set in order to stop just to get those values which are set which we have set for the manholes now let me just compute and see so you can see that uh, most of the cover criteria has been fulfilled over here but uh, there is this one pipe where uh, it is 10.27 so it is just above the 10 meter uh, mark that is the high uh, higher cover and here still it is uh, much higher and on the downstream side also over here and this is because of this uh, branch coming in so these are the values which we can again focus on so this is the approach which uh, i i was suggesting over here is that do some manual adjustments and tweaking to get uh, desirable results but uh, it should be done really carefully and using engineering judgment because uh, many a times what happens is if we go ahead to analyze and design or fix a particular constraint you know just to make things like like we did over here with uh, trying to fit the pipes in the cover constraint so if we, if we would have selected this pipe as well then there were likely chances that this side of the sewer network would also get affected due to backflows being generated till the end so the slopes would have changed on this side also the water surface profiles would have been changed and it would have uh, failed in the velocity as well as the cover criteria so if you are working on a very large network these kind of things become really sensitive because lot of constraints are working together 
to give you an optimized result and often time it is not possible to satisfy all the constraints so the best way to go ahead with this is to find out the most optimum solution uh, which will have the least amount of violations so the takeaway from this session which i want uh, to give you is that manual design is an iterative and time consuming process so having the software take over this portion helps you design large networks quickly so what we saw in the example was a pretty small network for a area which was moderately sized but you might you must be accustomed to working on really large networks in which manual iterative process of you know designing the network can be very time consuming and having the software take over this aspect will help you design it in a much quicker way the design criteria the degrees of freedom for design and design priorities govern the out ultimate outcome so the design criteria that you specify the various degrees of freedom depending on if you want to design the inwards the pipe sizes and the design priorities that we just discussed govern the outcome of your design and constraint based design provides a starting point for optimized design so this is the important point that we discussed but the final design is based on modelers engineering judgment and experience so these were the tips and tricks of constraint based design with the gvf convex and the gvf rational solver